There's kindness in the world. There's hope in the world. From food drives to community cookouts, see how Southern Californians are stepping up to help those in need. We got 10 families fed for the first week. And a local man befriended a woman living on Skid Row. Is there any way I could give you some cash and buy you a new pair of shoes? And what happens next is incredible. Plus, meet the trail mothers cleaning up California one step at a time. I started to worry about my community. Then later, we climb into the harmonic A. Hello, Happy New Year, and welcome to Localish LA. I'm Carl Schmidt. We are kicking off 2021 by looking at the good. The good being done in our communities. From street vendors in East Hollywood helping feed those in need, to a non-profit in the Arts District helping undocumented workers and their families. Here are their stories. No Us Without You is a nonprofit in 501c3 that helps to feed over 1,300 families. We saw the lack of representation for our back of the house community. We're talking porters, dishwashers, line cooks, uh, prep cooks. We've also extended our help to street vendors and cleaning crews from different hotels and buildings. We are currently feeding 1,300 families a week, each and every week learning from our past mistakes and uh, getting better as time goes on so we can keep adding in more families and executing it consistently. We have families of two up until households of like three or four families at a time living in the same spot. And these are all families that have been displaced. I would say a majority of don't qualify for uh, legal and government aid due to their legal status. How you doing, sir? We got 10 families fed for the first week and now eight months later we're about 1,300 families with the help of our team behind me and with everyone that's been spreading the word of our cause and donating to our cause all as well. Each family gets a box of food that helps sustain their family of four to five for up to a week. They're getting a little bit of everything, all the basic staples that every family needs during the pandemic. The response from the families is they, ha they talk to us with tears in their eyes. They're very grateful. These are scary times for all of us as citizens, let alone as someone that's not of legal status. But we're here to help. We're here to give them concrete hope. We tackle each and every single family's issues and problems head on because we believe that the most uncomfortable conversations are the most important, especially right now. It was easy for us because we consider a lot of these folks our friends and our family. We are a street vendors. We're trying to do uh, whatever we can to support our community. All the uh, grandmas and grandpas that are no longer able to cook for themselves. When COVID hit, the economy sort of dropped out for a lot of people, and it really showed me some disparity. This community is the community that needs it the most, and so this is what we're trying to do. Trying to take care of some of the people who are in need of some food. Community cookouts are street food kind of style cookout that we do here and we give it out to the community. It all starts with donations, then we buy the stuff, then we come out here and, and, and grill and then give it out to like, people who are living on the street. And the other one is the people who are the elderly. I got involved through Helio who I worked with. What I thought he was doing was like a really cool thing with a cookout. I thought to myself, well, I have a big grill and this is a way that I can chip in and help out. What we're cooking right now is steak and chicken. We don't call ourselves uh, chefs. We simply do the family recipes that family has been doing for generations and generations. The response has been great. Like I think every week we've sold out, give or take 100 to 130 plates of food. A community is best with diversity and I really don't want to see this community change too much, people be forced out. I would just encourage people to do one little thing to help somebody outside of your initial circle and I think that will help bring us all together a little bit. Now to the story of a boy in Boyle Heights who started selling flowers after his dad lost his job due to the pandemic. His story went viral after a complete stranger stepped in to help. ¿Cómo te llamas otra vez? ¿Cómo? Edgar. Edgar. Yo soy Wendy. Mucho gusto. Little Edgar touched a part of my heart that day that I met him. I want to help. You know, I was like, I, I need to, I, I was like, I cannot just not help. Hey, so Edgar Machik Jr., he's an immigrant 
He's eight years old. He came from Guatemala. His mother passed away. You know, they, they have siblings over there in Guatemala and they, him, along with the dad, decided to come here to the U.S. to seek a better life. Porque por la pandemia eh, bajó el negocio y no ha podido pagar el dealer del apartamento. Hola, Edgar. He couldn't find a job. Now here they are, entrepreneurs selling flowers uh, in, the, in the corner of East Los Angeles, and they're becoming examples to the whole community. Sí, he reached out to me and he was like, hey, buy my flowers. And, and you know, I, I just, I don't know, I just, something about him. He, he, he had this light and I was like, okay, well, I need to help. And I have a platform to help, so I did. Bye. 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 We started the GoFundMe um, account back in July. The goal was originally, I think, if I'm not mistaken, like $5,000. And it just grew. Uh, apparently when somebody opens up a GoFundMe account, it's not that easy to obtain the money. It's actually impossible to obtain the money if you're undocumented. So they needed a mid-person to get, make that happen. Dios le tocó el corazón al abogado Alex. Le va a sacar un, una residencia permanente de primero y después va conmigo por un asilo político. I think that the prospects in the future for Mr. Machik and his children look very promising. Machik Jr., because he's here with just one parent, the mother died. That puts him in a very strong position of getting his green card, and hopefully we could do the same for the daughters that are in Guatemala and might be coming here to the U.S. soon. Gracias, que Dios la bendiga por We've seen a lot of children stepping up to help their parents during this pandemic. Andy Soch opened not one, but two businesses, all driven by her love for her ailing father. I always thought that it would be more shameful for me not to do anything than to put myself out there and risk everything. Given my dad's health condition, I needed to figure out different ways to generate income. I realized that one job was not gonna be enough for me to sustain myself and my father. I was artistic and I loved plants and I thought bringing those together could potentially come up with something really enticing for my community to be part of. All these things make me feel that there's kindness in the world, that there's hope in the world, that there's enough love that could potentially make a business grow. Today we are at our second location of Latinx with Plants. I am the founder, um, worker, <laughs> social media handler, um, among many things. I started my pop-ups during Christmas um, of last year to help my father. And I think that's when I really thought that was when my business had really started. I started selling plants out of my porch in May, and by July, I had already opened up my store. I wanna be able to hire my community, employ my community, and having my, my dad always in the back of my mind, whether I know he's gonna get better or not, is always reminding me that I just have to keep trying. And even if he passes away, um, I always thought that it would be more shameful for me not to do anything than to put myself out there and risk everything. You, whatever it is that you're doing, that you're doing it with honesty and love and passion, and those things will get you far. We wish all the best to Andy and her father. Now let's talk about a group that is helping clean up our communities, in particular local hiking trails. Meet the Trail Mothers. I see everybody and anybody leaving their trash on the trail. I started to worry about my community, started to pick up after my community, started to take it upon myself to do something about all the trash. When I was cleaning up, I noticed that I couldn't do it by myself. So I thought to myself, you know, I could get people to help me. It started to grow in the middle of 2017 when we had our first event. 2020, we became an official 501c3 
nonprofit. Ever since then, we've been having um, little hikes, we've been having stewardship events, which is big with us. Stony Point Park is the main focal of this whole vision that I have. It needs a lot of help. There is a lot of graffiti there that I'm planning to remove. So I had an event last month and we picked up, I believe, 350 pounds of trash. There's more trash because of COVID. There's a lot. There's masks clinging on trees, on rocks. They're throwing it in the bushes, thinking that I or anyone else can't see it. There's more trash hidden in the bushes than there is out on the trail right now. And I'm working with the city so we can put more trash cans, more signs, do something different because I don't want, I don't want it to keep getting trashed and then ultimately have it closed down. I think it's really important to just take your trash with you. So I just say, pack it out, no matter what. Hikers, climbers, just do it. So our parks can stay open and clean. Up next. Right now I'm 101. Find out why this local woman is being honored with a massive mural. Plus, we'd like to buy a vowel. It's a positive show. One on one with Vanna White. And remember Lady Gaga's red carpet arrival in an egg? Did it inspire California's newest wellness craze? Welcome back to Localish LA. At age 69, Elta Regalado discovered a new passion, folklorico. Now she's 101 and the dancer is being honored with a beautiful mural in Long Beach. I was being on the wall, that I didn't expect. But here I am. I couldn't believe it, but then I realized it was me. <laughs> right now I'm 101, and here I am still dancing. Mexican folklorico. It's really important and inspiring for us to be able to paint this mural because older adults are not recognized as mm -hmm. much in the community or in the country as they should be. My name is Altagracia Amador de Regalado. Right now we're at Pan American Park in East Long Beach. And we're standing in front of a mural that we just painted. Uh, it took us about a week and a few days to paint this mural. And this is a mural of Alta Regalado. She rediscovered herself through dance and movement and went on to reinvigorate her community. But then when my husband passed away, I started all over again. And when he passed away, she just became was... a butterfly. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. We like to make sure that the art speaks to the community, to the artists, and is just meaningful all around. So this was a really nice way to highlight elders that are in society, to show people that it's not too late to take, tackle, whatever you want to do. Through dance, she is getting to pursue what brings her joy. It's just wonderful. They did a good job. Coming up, how one man's TikTok videos changed this homeless woman's life forever. But first, a new spin on the classic Wheel of Fortune. They're playing for charity, their favorite charities. And then, we are climbing into the Harmonic A. Localish LA has teamed up with On the Red Carpet, and we're giving away digital downloads of the movie The Empty Man, based on the acclaimed graphic novels. Go to the On the Red Carpet Instagram page now and enter for your chance to win. But watch out, The Empty Man will find you. Welcome back to Localish LA. The iconic game show Wheel of Fortune is getting a new spin in primetime. And I recently caught up with host Vanna White to find out more for On the Red Carpet. All right, is that I it? I just, it's, I just I clean up. With each other. Celebrities are giving America's favorite wheel a spin in primetime and all for a good cause. They're playing for charity, their favorite charities. A C. One C, yeah. <laughs> they can win a lot of money and they do win a lot, a lot of money. One round, we have $4 million wedges on the wheel. So how do the celebs compare to the regular contestants that play Wheel of Fortune? You never know what's going to come out of their mouth. Did I call it? Yeah, yeah. They're able to speak their mind and say whatever's on their mind and have fun, you know, just kind of joke with the other contestants or the other celebrities and myself and Pat. And they're all playing for the big dollars. You can never get enough 
fun, from watching fun, and you turn on Wheel of Fortune and you escape into solving the puzzles. You turn on the TV and you can see, it's just, you know, we are in a terrible situation in the whole world. So I think everybody needs help. And I'm so happy that Wheel was able to have these celebrity games and these celebrities have raised so much money for their favorite charities. Everybody loves to see people win money. So it's a positive show. You can catch an encore of the premiere episode of Celebrity Wheel of Fortune tonight at eight o'clock, right here on ABC7. Now, remember when Lady Gaga turned up at the Grammys in an egg? The singer told Ryan Seacrest she'd been in the egg for 72 hours. She called it a very creative experience. Well, now there is an egg you can go in, just not for 72 hours. It's called the Harmonic Egg and it is helping people heal. And we sent Rashamba Williams to check it out. So we offer two beautiful harmonic eggs, which is a patent geometric chambers that promotes healing through energy, light, and sound. The Healing Studio is a, a safe space for people to come and rest and restore their body and their autonomic nervous system. So we'll welcome you through the door. Hi, welcome. Hi. We'll meet with you to see what you want to heal, what you want to work on. And from there, we will choose your colors of the, what colors we want in the chamber, as well as your music. We sit you down in a zero gravity chair. We'll recline you back however you feel comfortable to recline back to. You can sit up if you like as well. Uh, the session is 40 minutes of music and then 10 minutes of silence to integrate. And at the end of that session, we ring the crystals and use that to let you know that we are entering the room and gonna be opening the door. Welcome back. Mm. It was just great to just kind of like have that moment that I can feel like my chest like easing and you know the color was just you know just so soothing and the sound it's like one speaker and then another speaker and it just I just felt myself just kind of like. You don't have to have an ailment or a disease. Day to day life, the hustle and bustle, traffic, work, we get out of balance. So this helps your cells rejuvenate and just relax and be able to kind of get you back into balance. You can learn more about the Harmonic Egg and Healing Studio at our local HLA Facebook page. This winter, a group of girls from the Hawthorne area are taking to the ice thanks to a little help from the LA Kings. Here's a look at the Power Project. I like how I get to meet new people and I like how I get to learn a new skill. Hockey is a non-traditional sport in our area. You don't see hockey programs here in Hawthorne, in Inglewood. You know, you don't because it's too expensive. But here, this is where you can get that. We uh, get you fitted for your gear and next thing you know, you're out there on the ice. The Power Project program is a, is a program that introduces um, hockey to kids in our area. So it started off as a conversation that I was having with my former sergeant. We were talking and I said, um, I'm gonna Google female black professional hockey player. And when I did that, it was just question marks. And I was like, well, what, is Google broken? Or <laughs> what is it, what happened? So from that point on, that's when I said, you know what? I think I want to start a program for minority girls. We're a big believer that it takes a village to, to raise humans, and we, we have a great village right now. The Kings have been a tremendous help. You know, they've donated everything from coaches to advice. When you teach things at a young age, they grasp through them. They're more willing to go out and try different things. And being hockey, one that that is quite different from everything else that they do, I think it's important that we introduce it at a young age. The Power Project. It's more of a mentorship because it's not just hockey. It's a program that gives them the skills. They get to see, experience different things, go different places. And they truly feel like they have support and they, feel, they truly feel like this is a family here. And I love that. <laughs> Up next, a local jewelry designer befriended a woman living on Skid Row. Is there any way I could give you some cash and buy you a new pair of shoes? And what happens next will have you reaching for a box of tissues.
This half hour on Local HLA, we've been focusing on people who have been doing good in their communities, haven't we, Gus? People like Isaiah Gaza. The jewelry designer from downtown LA set out to help somebody in his community. That's how he met Robin Clayton, and they started a friendship that went viral on TikTok. I have a question for you. So I'm out here just kind of spreading love right now. Is there any way I could give you some cash and buy you a new pair of shoes? I was just driving around town looking for people who kind of needed help. I just felt something inside my heart to stop where she was staying. Long story short, like Robin was praying and she said like a few hours later, I randomly pulled up and like that's the first video we ever did with her. And then that's kind of where the bond first started. You know, our video that we did together got 12 million views. We were driving around and I was like, I want to pick somebody out and buy them clothes and shoes, give them some money. Somebody who looked like they were in need. Well, I told you the next time I come back to see you, I was going to get you some new clothes. Oh, I hope you get you. Okay. Like I'm I was truly amazed that I'm still like sucking it all in. She just has a way of making you smile whenever you're around her. She's hilarious. How you doing, sweetie? had gotten a lot of housing offers prior to um, Isaiah coming, but they wasn't good. They were like dangerous locations to the point where she would rather live on the streets than stay there. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to get you an apartment before Christmas. And Robin was like, what? Are you serious? And I was like, we're going to figure something out. And we started the GoFundMe. Open it up. Yeah. I got you an apartment. You're you crazy. You're no longer homeless. I was really surprised and overwhelmed because it's not like every day, you know, a person goes out and um, experiences this type of help. Being able to just be here today is a miracle from where I came from. Our goal is building a business for her and her having money coming in consistently. But we're going to team up and do activism <laughs> together. Here's to uh, new beginnings, to housing and helping us. Such a great story. Hey, thank you so much for joining us for Localish LA. For more local stories, be sure to check out the Localish LA Facebook page. We'll see you next time. And in the meantime, stay safe and healthy, everyone. Don't miss an all new episode of Localish LA on Sunday at 6.30 on ABC7. Or click on the subscribe button and watch Localish LA anytime.